Hello, my name is Kevin and welcome to the Love Decanters channel. So today I'm going to talk about shaft and globe decanters. So I'll sh first of all, I'll show you what, what I mean. This is a shaft and globe decanter. This is the globe. This one's a bit squished, but sometimes it's very round. And this is the shaft. That's it. That's the shaft and globe. And quite often the, the stopper matches the body of the decanter. So that's what I'm talking about. Um, I'm talking about it from a UK perspective. The timelines I'm going to be using are UK ones. And um, yeah, so in the mid 18th century, that's when they first appeared in the UK as decanters with stoppers, as you'd expect. And that was really right at the very beginning of um, decanters, really, as, as we see them today in the UK, or anywhere actually. But um, that was short lived, and I don't have any of those. So yeah. Um, I don't have anything from the sort of like the 1750s of, of those anyway. So yeah, sad, but true. Um, I keep my eyes open, but they just don't pop up. Strange that, isn't it? Anyway, um, they kind of reappear at the beginning of the Victorian era. And yeah, they, and then they morph a bit as they go along. They have a different look and feel to them. Um, and then probably die out in the late 20s, early 30s. So that's the timeline for them, really. Um, so they're sort of like probably from 1840s, right, probably to 1940s. Well, probably not quite making it that far, I don't think, not that I can find. And I'll show you that later. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start out by showing you some references. And also I'm gonna do use books for the very early stuff, but then I'm going to try and stick to catalogues for the rest of it. OK, so as I've said, catalogues are king. You know, it's accurate. Um, you know that some there's no room for misinterpretation from authors, etc, etc. So, um, yeah, I'm going to try and use catalogues for everything afterwards. Um, and that's going to be interesting. So here we go. This book is The Decanter, Ancient to Modern by Andy McConnell. And these are the kind of like earliest forms that he's got in here. These are from the 1730s. And um, yeah, they don't have stoppers. They would have had corks probably to go with them. Um, they're not much removed from uh, the wine bottles of the day. Probably longer necks, but that's about it really. So I can flick over a few pages. Here's a rather fancy job. Look at that. Um, He's got this date as 1760, beautiful cutting. This is um, all, all been done either water powered or um, foot treadle powered and um, with a spire stopper. And uh, yeah, so that's that's the top end of the market. And then this, we've got this one here, which is dated 1759 see that here and uh, yeah this one hasn't got a stopper it doesn't look like it's even fitted for a stopper and I think that's about it so these were even by today this is why I'm not finding them they weren't long-lived especially in this form um, this is the end end of the series so to speak and um, yeah so really so not only is it a long time ago but they weren't long-lived and and yeah, very hard to find. Um, I, I, I don't think I've really seen them up for sale um, in eBay or anywhere. I'd have had a shot at it, obviously. Um, but yeah, it, they just don't come up. And uh, you have to be going to really posh um, auctions if you want to try and find one. Or um, posh antiques fairs. So I thought I'd have a flick around in the book and I found this one as well. Um, this is more your classic style. Um, this is a lint decanter. That's why it's got those ribs running across the body. Um, all the lint glass looks like that. So this is a very 18th century thing. It's quite rare. Um, he's dated this one 1755 to 65. And then interestingly, back here a few pages. He's got some stoppers. 
and the stoppers we will see on them are usually like this or this this or this um yeah it just so happens i do have some stoppers so i will show you the stoppers um so that you know what you're looking at anyway at least even if i don't have the decanters and i think i might show you a decanter from the same period just that you get a smell of what the glass is like this book is um white Friars glass james powell and son of london uh, by museum of london and this is the pattern books they say from 1830s onwards so i think these are a little bit past the 1830s but you've got these two here this one yeah. um, this one's almost shaft and globe it's kind of teardrop shape isn't it and then this one here which is kind of somewhere between having a gothic stopper and a shaft and globe body um, scale neck this is a feature that you're going to see a lot on the more expensive ones um, if I, let me um, go over some pages so this one here this in fact these three things look post 1845 um, very heavy like bludgeon decanter style shaft and globe this one looks a bit later because it's quite lightweight um, I'll show you some more I'll move on a bit more I'm a bit more comfortable with these ones because it says 18 circa 1855 the other one says 1830s onwards which is difficult to pin but you can see this one's quite thin looking this one's a bit heavier um, yeah, these are I have one that's a bit like this I can't find it at the moment um, yep yeah, some of them still have that vestige of a ring um, and squash bodies yeah so some of them are quite flat well not very flat but you know flattened globes as opposed to absolutely balls these pages are from the 1860s this looks quite slim well scale cut neck faceted ball stopper it's getting to be more the classic that you see and over the page there's a whole page of them slight variations one thing that's interesting here this is something that i only see at this period where it's got like a double like a small stopper and a bigger one a knob and then a bigger ball on top yeah so I always date these around that time 1850s 1860s because this is the only time these appear in any catalogs that i've seen um, they disappear out of these catalogs yeah some of these are not quite that i would count that as a shaft and globe with a foot on it um yeah so you get to see the scale scale neck Should you I'll explain something about these things later when I show you some glass. But yeah, different levels of cutting. And also, these ones look heavy, um, and these ones look more lightweight. By the time you get to the 1870s, at least in Whitefriars, they're all thinly blown. The ones with the double stopper balls are gone. Um, you can see there's still a tank they're still, still doing scale cut necks um, and then different styles yep. so here we are amongst the real aesthetic movement glass and we've got a couple here um, one of the ones I've got might even be this one here um, I'll show you it later but um, yeah very plain very finely made um, all of this glass is very finely made now. The book I have here is the Victorian Catalogue of Household Goods by, um, well, it's edited by Dorothy Bosomworth. Anyway, so this has got, this is late Victorian now. So we're probably looking at the 1890s. And yeah, so these are kind of things that you're actually seeing into well, this style of work is you see in the interwar period so this is the beginning of this kind of thing but yeah shaft and globe still running and there's these this one here which looks like an early one 
Uh, uh, this one, no, that's a different shape. This, as I go over the pages, you'll see there's some on every page here. So there we go. Got claret jugs as well. And so these are obviously lighter made, and these are heavier. Have I missed a page? Have I missed a page? I thought there were more than this. No. I hadn't missed a page. I just hadn't gone far enough. So you can see here some more. Carrot joke style. Ferns. Very late Victorian feature. Plain one. A little birds on it, I think there. One decanter that isn't. So you can see, actually, at this time, by this time, this is the dominant shape. Um, if I go over the page, there's some more. And you can see Shaft and Globe are the winners again. So I think that's it for this book. Yep. So, yeah. Um, we'll move on to Edwardian now. This book is Edwardian Shopping by R.H. Landridge. And... Yeah, so we've got some more, but you see other shapes in here. Now, I don't know if it's because the other catalogue was more conservative, but we are seeing, we're seeing plenty of shaft and globe, but we're also seeing other shapes. And you can see there's this same classic printies cut in them. Um, either the stoppers are like this, generally, or like this. Let's see over the page, there's a couple more on here, I think. Are these more claret jugs? I think, I think that might be it. I think, yes. Yes, it is. So, yeah, other shapes um, are coming in and taking over. Um, so, we'll now move on to something else from the Edwardian period. Here we're looking at the um, Webb Corbett catalogue for 1910. It's on the Glass Musterbusch website. Um, yeah, I'll give you a link for that. And yeah, if you're looking in here, the um, shaft and globe is no longer the predominant shape. This, this one here, let's open this and have a look. So you've got this one here, which is very kind of Victorian looking now, considering we're in the Edwardian period. And then um, if we need to go on a few more pages. So some of these are kind of looking, as you'd expect, is a transition time into war. Some of them are looking a bit Victorian. There we go. Here's a really plain looking one. I think there's another one on the next page. It's very same. Actually, is that the same, same, or is it? No, one's called balloon and one's called club. Yeah, so, and that's it in that period. So um, we'll move on and look at something else now. We're looking at the um, Stuart Crystal 1927 catalog. Okay, and um, this was downloaded from the Stuart Crystal Facebook group. And if we scroll down, there, yeah, this, this one here, very Victorian looking Shafton Globe. Um, in 1927 so this style hasn't completely died there are um, others in here that are kind of squished out shapes or slightly different if we go down I would count this one as shafters globe but the stoppers now like some of the later Stuart ones it's got a foot on it as well and if we go down a bit more I'm not sure if that's it I think it is the others are kind of like a bit so this one's kind of like a shaft and globe but a bit off in a different way and that's the same shape there um, and I think that's about it yeah again this isn't this is like a shaft and globe but it's not actually a shaft and globe I don't even know what you'd call that shape but anyway um, this is the end of the line for them I think this is 1927 um, they don't reappear in the 1938 catalogue so um, yeah, the end of the line for this style of decanter. As I said in the intro, I don't have any early um, decanters. 
So I am going to show you some stoppers and I'm going to show you this decanter here because this is a nice one. It's almost, you know, it's about 30 years out, but um, yeah. So we'll start with these stoppers that I have. So these are the ones that, that they were showing on some of the decanters, uh, early ones with teardrops on them. And you can see with the, this one's, yeah, you were seeing this one in the pictures as well. They kind of, yeah, that one's not even fitted. That just plonks into the top of the bottle, rests on wherever it rests. So that's a classic stopper from that period. So is this, and they showed you some with um, spires as well. Similar kind of look. Tips of both of them would be broken, but you would be a bit broken after 250 years. So yeah, that's what the spies and the glasses are kind of good grayish color. Yeah, they're not super bright from that period. Um, let's see if I can let me stop a second and dig something out just to sh show you and compare. So I'm dragging this really classic Art, art Deco stopper. But I don't know if you're going to really see it in this light here. Um, yeah, oh, this one, hang on. So if you look at the color of the base of them, can you see the color difference now? When you look down the length of it, you can see, forget the fact that it's, that there's shade in this one and there's not in this one. So yeah, it, the glass doesn't look as bright as um, 20th century glass. And also when you're looking at those shaft and glow decanters, the base should look like this. So yes, it will be on a round bore, but you should expect to see masses of wear like this masses it should be and a broken pontal like this or if anything the pontal might be scuffed out of it but it's probably not going to be polished but this is how the under this kind of level is wear is what you should see if you don't see that much wear you know it's not right because it should be over 250 years old. So I'm starting with these two. Um, yep, uh, I'm afraid it's all going to be downhill from now, looking at decanter, uh, these um, Shaft and Globe decanters, because I think these are my nicest ones. This one's probably um, 1840s. Um, the ring is a style that you see on Nelson. Decanter from the 1830s. This is very gothic cutting, so it's also pointing to it being it. Uh, yeah, just the whole demeanor of the decanter is kind of like 1830s, 1840s style, but it has got a lot of uranium. And this one is at the other end of the scale. Um, this is might be um, very late Victorian, possibly Edwardian. Um, it's not uranium glass. It is rather, it's got a morning star cut base. Can you see with the, with the rays actually cut into rays to the shape of a star? Um, it doesn't have any ways near it. Let's see if there's, check the bottom of this one for where. Yeah, it's difficult to tell because it's sitting on such small patches. Difficult to tell, but um, yeah, this one doesn't have that much wear, which I think probably means it's a bit early 20th century. It's a beautiful color, though. Um, these bands are something that you'd see on um, Stuart Crystal Glass in the interwar periods. Um, so yeah, it, its demeanor is very 
you know, much later. And just the look of it. I mean, this is copying stuff that's from 1810, but it's not that. With this on it. And um, yeah, the quality of the glass, the fitting is just as you'd expect. It's really good. Um, so yeah, that's a quality piece. Um, I would, if I was dating it, I would say 1900. Um, but it might have been a style, when you're looking at the others that we saw, this might have been a style that they carried on doing through to the 1920s. We don't know. Something I alluded to earlier was um, cutting to price uh, or making things to a price. And yeah, this is, this is it demonstrated here. So at the bottom end of the scale, you've got this. Uh, there's no pontal. It's just so they must have just found some way of gripping it when they were after they've blown it. They've just cut a small spaced row of printies around it, and they've got a similar one on the stopper. The stopper is, yeah, rough fit. So I, I like it. I think it's quite cute because it's a cheap thing. You can see, also see the quality in the in the bend there. It's not great. I can feel lots of ribbing as it goes around the corner there. Yeah, it's um not well made, and you can see it in the in the glass as well. And then you've got step up. This one's made without a lip. It's got like a you've seen this in some of the catalog pictures where they don't have a pouring lip. Just fitted like that, and um, yeah, so this one's a bit better made. The printies are bigger, more close together. It's got a polished neck. Um, this one's got a foot with a star cut on it as well. It's got a lot of wear in it as well, so well used item. Um, and the stopper's matching the, the body. Like boggly eyes, boggly eyes there. So yeah, that's that one. And yeah, you can see it's a step up, and then top of the range. Dense print. It's got three rows of dense cut printies. It's got a star cut base, and then it's got a scale cut neck. Um, and then Printies cut around the neck. It's got a cut neck on the stopper Printies and then it's got a cut top Cut to a point And even right under the lip and the lip is cut So yeah, this is a Quality item and you're probably going you know the way they would do these things uh, and these are from different makers, but you probably have the maker that made this do it with the, in the same way. So you get like the two shilling one, a three shilling one, and a four shilling one. Um, and you, you know, you pay your money and take your choice kind of thing. So, so yeah, I just thought you should show you that quality variety that you get. Um, I have another one that is actually super low quality, makes this one look really good. So I'll, I'll wheel that one out next. I thought I'd leave this one here and bring this one out. This one is worse by um, a good margin. Um, it's not cut at all. It um, smelled the engravers real. So yeah, had a bit of ferns put on it, well spaced. Um, so that makes it late 19th century. There's a, some sort of fault in the glass, in the neck there, but hey, still good enough to sell at whatever price this was at. Um, yeah, didn't even bother to rough off the end of the stop. But, and um, there's another fault in the glass in the pouring lip. Can you see that? That's the glass. So yeah, this is... Um, as badly made for handmade 
as badly made as you're going to get. Um, the, the neck is all a bit, can you see, it's all a bit wonky. Yeah, but I kind of like this kind of stuff. When it's so bad, it's good. Um, because someone should have thrown it away. And um, somehow it's got kept. So now I'm going to go all aesthetic movement and arty on you. So these are both very fine ones. Um, this one is the one that might be um, white fryers. They're probably from, you know, the 1870s, 1880s, something like that. Um, I think this was in the 1870s catalogue. From white fryers, this style. I think. John Walsh Walsh might have made something very similar a bit later. But um, this one's got quite a bit of wear on the base. Can you see where it sits on the table? Um, the stop is very finely made as well. Yeah, I do that to keep it from falling out, but yeah. And then this one. This is what's known as a cup mouth decanter. It's unusual. This was a design put forward by Christopher Tresser, one of the earliest, um, well, he was the first industrial designer in the world, I think, because he had a design bureau as opposed to working for a company, or at least he worked under contract for many companies. Um, yeah, and this would be a similar period, 70s or 80s. Um, stop that. Goes like that. I've got a pair of these. They look exactly the same, and that's how they go. So yeah, they're they're very nice, um, very cool, very plain, very finely made. You know, the glass. If you look at the glass compared to that other one, there is not a ripple in it. It's a very quality made thing. I'm not sure if this one counts. This would be 1850 to 1870. It's probably by Richardson with this um, etching. It's like a shuffling globe with the bottom sawn off. Don't know if that counts, um, but you can see again, it's a quality one. Um, yeah, at some point I'm gonna have to get that cleaned, but not today. But anyway, um, yeah, it's very nice. But I don't know if it really counts, but it is very nice. I just wanted to show it off. And of course, I have a pair. I was about to move on to the 20th century and I nearly missed this super cool aesthetic movement one. Um, yeah, so this one has got it bells and whistles. It's got a stem and a foot, and the stem is a blown ball with prunts on. Those are those little things that look like half a blackberry. They're called prunts. Um, the foot is folded over the top. Or is, it, or is it folded? No, it's not. It's just a rim. So it's not folded. It's got a rim. I thought it was folded, but actually I can't get my fingernail into it. Oh, it is folded because it's got an air bubble in it. Yes, it is. Look at that. Can you see the air bubble? So that is a folded rim, but it's sealed up. Um, yes, polished pontal. But, yeah. So this will be um, probably um, 1870s, 1860s maybe proper aesthetic movement piece. Um, yep, we'll move on. Let's now go to the 20th century. Actually, let's not go to the 20th century. I nearly missed this one too. Again, another one with a foot, another aesthetic movement one. Similar period to the last one. Uh, this one's got a bit of rock hustling, cutting and etching. Uh, you can see the bird there. And it's got this beautiful Look at that cutting, can you see? 
This is probably, I think this is Thomas Webb, but I'm not certain. But yeah, it's a really beautiful piece. And look at the stopper as well. And the same cutting on. Um, I don't know if it counts. The shaft is not that tall compared to the body. Um, but I don't know what else you'd call that. Yep, I'm afraid this is all you're getting from the 20th century. I have two Thomas Webb decanters. This one is in the ribbonette pattern. Can you see? Like a chevron. The stopper has the same chevron pattern. Polish pontal underneath. And this one is in the fur comb pattern. It's got the same tricorn pouring lip. Just about make out the fur comb pattern on the stopper there, and then you've got this fur comb pattern looks like scales. They're supposed to be like a fur cone. Yep, and the same parched pontal underneath. So yep, these are either Edwardian or probably maybe post-war. I think they were making these. And they just have a, you saw the aesthetic ones that we saw earlier, these are more solidly built. I think a lot of the ones that we saw that were kind of like this, yeah, the 20th century ones, just a bit more chunky than the, so although it has that plain look about it, even though it's got these moulded patterns on, there's probably about twice the thickness of glass, but nowhere near as thick as the, um, as the uranium green one that we saw right at the very beginning. So this is all the glass that I'm going to show you. So yeah, that was all the glass I'm going to show you. I did speculate with myself as, hmm, I have some claret jugs that are shaft and globe. Should I show those? And I have some more that you could speculate, is it or isn't it? And I said, no, let's just stick to, to this and um, stick to the subject and uh, wrap it up before everybody dies of boredom so yeah so I, I did this this video for two reasons one I was asked if I could do one and two yeah this is the stuff that you see all the time all the time um, so what is it that you're seeing and it, it is difficult because you saw in those catalogues this stuff that was coming out in 1927 that looks like it's from 1870. It's, yeah, it is difficult to, there's some that you can go, yeah, it's part of the aesthetic movement. This is when it is, and it slots into this slot. You, the post ones that I said were 20th century, I know because of the designs, I know exactly. But a lot of the other stuff is a little bit wishy-washy, you know, very conservative designs, and didn't really change very much over a long time. So yeah, it's hard. It is. It was just stuff that was made for a long time, um, and some of them you can slot in, and some of them you can't, and that's the nature of the beast. So, with that said, all of the um, books that I've used will be in the um, and the references will be in the description below. And um, please remember to like and subscribe. And thank you very much for watching. Good night.